City of Stevens Point Board of Water and Sewerage Commissioners Meeting, recorded April 12, 2021. Computer says that it's noon. So welcome everybody. Uh, first of all, order of uh, business is to take the roll call, which um, we'll handle the way we normally do. The second, of course, is the minutes uh, from last month's meeting. Are there any corrections or changes? If not, a motion to approve is in order. Move to approve. I'll move for approval, Ray. All those in favor signify by the sign of aye. 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 Full same sign. Motion carried. Department claims, as is traditional, we'll start with water. Any questions? I have a question on 55292. Okay, 55292, Springbrook yeah, this is part of our software conversion that we've been doing. Um, okay. Going back and forth with the billing software, so that's one of the progress billings. What does what does UB stand for? Utility billing. Utility building. Okay. Yeah, bi Thank uh, you. billing. I should have been able to figure that out. Yep. That software works in modules. And uh, all the different modules have a little bit different name to them. So that's that module is the utility billing module. Okay. Oh, uh, Paul, here comes Anna. She was in the waiting room. I might have missed her for a half a minute there or so. I have a question regarding 55328. Five, Um, that's a GPS unit. It's a, uh, but it uh, it also shows up on the other three, or, or the other two utilities. Um, is that a is that a lump sum, or each utility is billed? So we split that up three ways. Um, so it is that uh, ten five thirty two ninety times times three. Um, it's probably about oh, if I had to guess maybe a seven years or so it might be even a little more than that what that is is the survey grade gps unit that we use for during construction during some design components um, during inspection process to collect points and it's the same unit as the uh, engineering department um, bought also so we try to get them together so that you know we kind of can lean on each other as far as support goes and parts and pieces and just general knowledge so it's been many years since the last one, but it was in the capital operation and maintenance um, uh, plan that was approved for this year. Sure. Thank you. You bet. If there are no other questions on the water department, a motion is in order. Or do we do all three at once? Right? Oh, you're right. I forgot. All right, let's go on to the sewage department. I got a question on number 55257. Um, yep, so that's for uh, a replacement generator at wastewater. I think we were doing these three years in a row. If memory serves, Chris can comment, but that's one of the trailer mounted generators for when we have outages to go to lift stations and power those, that kind of thing. Okay. I, I remembered uh, something about about that, but um, then further down 55285, I saw craft power and rebuild a generator and that confused yeah. me. So the latter one is the uh, cogen. Geez, I don't know what's wrong with this highlighting stuff, but um, that's the rebuild of the cogen unit that generates the electricity and the heat for the treatment plant. And the one above is the mobile one that we can take out to lift stations, even, you know, whatever okay. sites we have that are without power. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All 
on page two, there's the million dollar payment to million dollars plus to the, um, I assume it's the clean water fund or something like that. Replacement fund. Oh no, that's something else. Is that an annual payment or what's the, the status on that? So, um, Mary, if you're on, you can jump in here too, but I believe this is the loan payment for the biosolids upgrade project that we just completed uh, last year, the $16 million one. So is that paid once a year? We, I think we do two payments every year. One has principal and interest and one just has interest. Is that right, Mary? Mary got kicked out. She's in the waiting oh. room. Oh, geez. Here I am. <laughs> okay. Mary, is your audio connected now? Now it is, yes. Um, and that would be both the water and the sewer payments for their both have two payments a piece and it is the principal and interest, but there will be another interest payment in November. Okay, thank you. Oh. Any other questions on sewage? All right, on to stormwater. No questions? Motion in order is in order to approve? All three sets of claims? So move, Knockman. I think I heard Ray and who else? Knockman. Ray and Ray. Oh. <laughs> All those in favor signify by the sign of aye. 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 Both same sign. Motion carried. Something about uh, street improvements. Yeah. So this comes up once a year. Um, we haven't always handled it quite the same way, but in the last couple of years, we like to bring this award to both the uh, Water and Storage Commission as well as the Board of Public Works on the same day. So I'll take you to um, the memo here. Basically what's going on here, and I'm going to skip ahead, um, the this is the same language that will be seen at the Board of Public Works tonight in awarding the bid not to exceed $7.1 million, including the 15% contingency. And we put it in there for the same reason so that I can let them know tonight what your action was. So this project represents our annual reconstruction project where we're coordinated with Public Works. Our portion of that, our portion of that 7.1 million um, is, is the about this about 4.1 million um but what we do is we award it with public works because then it includes a contingency these big projects have um some variability in there but i wanted to show you and you can all see my screen right the the one i'm sharing okay yes, correct um i wanted to show you the dollar amounts that we had projected and that's the right column here versus what the bid was and there's some good news and some bad news the good news is, you know, our overall estimate here was pretty close, just a little high, 4.3 versus 4.1 on total utility items. The kind of bad news, and I shouldn't say it's bad, it's just, uh, you know, you can never tell. If you look at this line here, we estimated a little over 3 million for stormwater and we were way off. Thankfully, it's way lower than we estimated. Um, but this is because of the nature of the project. It's very unique for us, a lot bigger pipe than we're, than we're used to constructing in an annual year. And the variability there with the way a contractor bids that can be pretty extreme. So you'll see, even though we estimated this high and it came in at, you know, we are looking at roughly half of that, we did the opposite on water, um, where we estimated it at a little over 600,000 and it came in a little over double that. Um, so... I wanted to just kind of throw it out there to say that, you know, as we go through approving this, that it's, it's going to, of course, impact the capital operation and maintenance um, item that was approved in previous months because this column on the right is where we estimated it. And this column on the left is essentially where you'd be approving it at uh, with the bid that came out. Well, as far as I'm concerned, the, the only number that's really important knowing estimates are estimates is the total and that it's less than it was predicted. So 
Yeah, and and the one thing, if if I were to kind of say anything about it, is you know, stormwater is our smallest enterprise from a uti- uh, from a wet utility perspective, right? And and so it's good that we were high on that from an estimate and it came in lower because we'll be able to um, survive that through the rates a little bit easier. So yeah, I'd agree. Any other questions? Yeah, I'm I'm still not sure. This is Ray. I'm I'm still not sure about the the numbers up above in the table. I got those pretty well, but then it it moves to 7.175. Yeah, so the 7.175 and that's if you if you go through and here, let me rotate this. Um, oh, I didn't read that. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, this is this is the bid tab. So uh, you can see Gerke and Haas and James Peterson. These are all of the items in that project. And the tricky thing is, if I go back up here, um, this 7.175 is what the city as a whole is approving. It includes uh, curb gutter and sidewalk. It includes paving. It includes everything that's a city expense, city hall that is. And then, so of that 7.1, roughly 4.1 is our expense. So, okay. you know, ultimately these awards go from, from this commission and the Board of Public Works to this Common Council for approval. So I wanted sure. to get the, the um, approval on the, on the same wording as what Public Works is going to tonight. But so that you guys know, I broke it out to say, here's the approximate dollar amount that's going to be each utility responsible for. Okay, thank you. You bet. I think another way to explain it might be, not that you you did a poor job, but, you know, we might be responsible in that uh, $4 million for a portion of the excavating, taking out the old pipe, putting in the new pipe, whereas the other department at the city will be responsible for putting the asphalt in and the curbs in or something to that extent. Right. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Joel, um, or what, what streets are being done? Okay. So starting from the MEJ's area, uh, first Avenue there, right on their West property line going, um, North up first Avenue. Um, what's the street East West street there. Fifth, Eric, I got a head nod. Yeah. Maybe you can butt in. Uh, there's quite a bit going East West on fifth. And then there's two other north-south streets. Maybe you can tell me west and. Yeah, so we're also doing forest um, from Buchholz south all the way down to Franklin. And then uh, two jogs from Fifth Avenue north to Buchholz. Um, and then one south of Fifth Avenue to Fourth Avenue on West Street. So it's kind of like a conglomeration of side streets, but the main corridor for our storm sewer project is Fifth Avenue East, all the way down to First Ave, down to MEGAs to get that big pipe and that big stormwater headache we have in that uh, retention area off Fifth Ave down to the big pipe on Center Street. I hear Joel's got a map here. Yeah, cool. So the, the lines in black here are the streets involved. Uh, this is MEJs right here. This is First, this is Fifth, and then Forest. And then there's a couple of these little side streets you'll yeah. see. Now, does this put a button on the uh, stormwater problems in this area, or is there still another increment to, to continue? Yeah, there's, there's a little bit yet. Um, it's definitely going to make a difference. Um, we're going to move the needle quite a bit because 5th and Grant, where is Grant? Right here. 5th and Grant was one of the biggest flooding area problems we had. And this corridor is definitely taking bigger sewer out. The remaining construction corridor that we need to kind of consider it fully done is from this point right here, east down center point to about Smith. And we do have future years that are, are you know, even next year we're, we're in this neighborhood again. So I suspect we'll, we'll get real close to wrapping that up next year. Mm-hmm. Are there a couple of blocks up there on, is it 6th Street, east of 2nd Street that we're doing? Uh, this, these are the two blocks east of 2nd on Buchholz. Oh, Buchholz, okay. Any other questions? I think a motion to approve the uh, bid from the company based out of wherever the heck it was um, is in order. 
Move to approve. Gaines will second. All those in favor signify by the sign of aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. There's no handout on the credit card processing, correct? No, 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 there's not. Um, this was a discussion item just to keep you guys kind of up to speed and get some direction from you. Um, so on this item, and, and I'm going to probably seek a little bit of uh, corrective input here from Mary after I get done explaining the way I understand it, but um, when we came into uh, closing the office and utilities across the state did, um, the PSC gave some latitude to utilities because of all the uh, remote type nature of the business we're doing. Um, they gave us some latitude on not charging credit card fees and, and utilities mostly took, took advantage of that. When you combine that with the fact that we're coming out of the special rules from um, from COVID related decision making and the fact that we're in a new billing system, our new billing system doesn't work quite the same as the old one. And we either move forward, um, and, and this isn't a today thing, it, we need to collect some more information before we uh, really kind of nail everything down. But when we move forward into the kind of, here's how things are gonna be, we need to either charge everybody or charge nobody, right? for processing of credit cards and ACH. Now, oh, Joel, Joel, can you be more specific about, just give us an example of what we're doing right now. Well, we're not charging, but if we were going to charge, what, what would change? Well, so we used to charge for credit card fees and not for ACH, but that's more like the e-check ACH, not the ACH where people give us their information and we run it automatically quarterly. And now, if we're going to charge, we need to either charge for credit card and ACH processing of like an e-check or not charge for either one of them. And so far, like our, our old billing system, we charge for credit cards and not for ACH. Our new system, we need to pick one or the other in future months. Now, there is some payoff there. For one, when, when there isn't a small fee that goes a, along with it for the customer, it gets adopted more and it actually does streamline our process quite a bit. And right now, if you look at it, and we'll have to look at it in a month or two to come to, our, our total fees are in the couple hundred, few hundred dollars for, for all of the um, business that we do that way. So it's not, it's not, um, it's not super significant. Um, but I do, I do think that it's worth looking at it for a couple months to see how it, how it gets adjusted. And once we're through billing all of the cycles in our new system to see where it lands and then kind of bring it back to you. But I did want to kind of just state, you know, we got a couple curveballs here. One, a pandemic, right? And that's when everybody was taking credit card payments and e-checks more than they ever had been, which is why our regulator said, okay, you can, you can do this. You can take them without processing the fees. And it essentially means the rates take on the fees, uh, the, the utility pays for the fees. Um, but then the fact that they allow us to do that doesn't kind of cover all the gaps because our new billing system, you either need to do one or the other. You need everybody pays their own fees or everybody pays a fee or nobody pays a fee. So kind of, kind of looking to get your sense on, on that, but I can certainly bring more information back in the coming months. Ma Mary, did I kind of paint a little too wide on anything there? <laughs> no, that was perfect. Okay. I think the most important thing to me is with that amount of cost, minimal amount of cost, I don't think the bad will that you generate by charging those is, is uh, that bad will is, is more of my concern, even if it's only for 50 customers, then the, I mean, what do you charge them about three and a half percent above and beyond the uh, bill? That one, that one is outside of my knowledge. Mary, yeah, is, there a, sure. is it a tiered rate or what? Yeah, it was it's a 3% fee with Starnix yeah, online yeah. payment. Yeah. So from, from I, I think your idea of tracking it for maybe six months and seeing uh, you know, what kind of real money there is there or lack of, of revenue there is there and then compare it with the 20 or 40 people who are going to be grumbling about the fact that they have to pay an extra $8 a quarter, 
you know, or something yeah, like that. I, I do think it's worth uh, kind of staying the course right now because there is a, a pretty significant amount of not only kind of goodwill with customers there, but it, it is does streamline some things and it streamlines them in a way that we're trying to go, right? We're trying to get a little more online presence, a little more online payment, automatic payment, because then things like your delinquency process and just the effort that you put into opening mail, posting payments, all of that, it all goes away. So I think it's well worth the money as long as it stays under control. So we'll plan on uh, watching that as we get into our new billing system a few more months, and we'll bring back a, a number to you guys to make sure that you're comfortable with it. Actually, but I'd, I'd have you think about this until we talk about it the next time, but I think that might be something you want to keep track of on, on a monthly or quarterly basis and have it be an ongoing source of uh, information so that we can see if there's any significant trends over a period of two to five years. Okay, real good. I'll add that to my notes for commission agendas. I was just wondering if, uh, you know, it's certainly uh, in the case of residential customers, you know, you were talking about an $8 uh, amount or something, but if you had, say, our largest commercial customer and their accounting office decided to start running it through on these types of transactions, does that take something that you would raise some concern with the amount of dollars th that a 3% fee would amount to? We've had a couple bigger ones, I know. Um, I, I, I don't know, to that end, Mary, can we set an upper limit to the uh, to the the bills that we'd allow to get processed that way? I can check into that. I'm not aware, but that that is something we can definitely just email and find out. Okay. I'll add that to the notes, uh, Carl, so I can bring something back. You know, because some of these cards, you know, they turn around, they give you a rebate right back, and if they're efficient and paying their bill every month, they're just using it as a little bit of a discount there. Travel rewards, yeah. <laughs> Travel rewards, yeah. Brought, brought to you by the water department, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> yeah. And, and all the other rate payers. Yep. Right, right, yeah. We'll take a look at that to, to make sure that we don't get a, I mean, we've got a couple big customers, right? And they're, they're more likely to be the ones that through corporate type operations are gonna either do the pre set up ACH or just cut a check and send it in. But you know, we wouldn't want the mail sending us a credit card payment, right? Cause that'd, that'd get expensive pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go on to water supply and distribution reports, Eric. All right. Um, so as you can see, the pumpage is up a little bit this month compared to last year. I'm kind of in line with 2019s. Um, I did look into it a little bit. We do have um, new radios on the mills meter so we can data log them whenever we want and our guys are now putting all of these large customers into a spreadsheet so I can see them from my desk which is awesome when it comes to reporting to you guys or just looking to see what who uses what water. Um, the mill did use a couple more million gallons last month but it doesn't make up for the rest of it. Um, I know you guys kind of wonder if it's commercial or residential using this when we have an increase or decrease. So um, I'll keep looking into it a little bit more, but pumpage is up a little bit. On top of that, uh, coming up May 6, we have our triennial DNR sanitary survey. So the DNR engineer comes on site, they'll come to our office and go through all of our private well documents, all of our emergency chlorination plan, all of our valve and hydrant exercising records, kind of give us a rundown of everything he's looking for in the office setting. And then we'll go out and visit all of our well sites check for anything that's deficient um, for any of you that haven't seen this before. So that'll be coming up May 6th. And then our hydrant flushing week that we flush at night will be May 10th through the 13th, um, that week of our commission meeting. So we'll be reporting back on that stuff, probably next commission meeting. That's all I really had, unless you guys have any other questions. I've just got a question on um, the, the additional pumpage. It, could that be related to any leakage we might have in, in water mains? That's a good question. Um, it, it, it very well could be. 
Um, I think anything with a sub substantial leak we'd have definitely seen already, but it could be okay. definitely a handful of uh, background leaks now that the frost is coming out of the ground. Uh, after our flushing week in May, we will have Troy here to do our survey of leak detection. So that may catch some. So yeah, that is a good question, Ray. That, that could be a possibility of some of the, some of the gallons there. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? If not, we'll go on to the sewage treatment operations, Chris. All right, uh, the wastewater facility, we met all of our permit requirements for the month of March. Um, plant has come back pretty nicely from our upset from over the winter. Um, as of last week, we were back to normal operation. So everything at the moment is running very well. Um, we were able to produce about 40% of our own electricity and about 55% of our own heat for the month of March. And kind of the big project coming up here is we're going to go back to trying our homemade odor control for the dryer as the weather starts to warm up here. We're going to get that hooked up and running again and see what we can do to mitigate any odors for our neighbors. If anybody has any questions, I'll take them. Otherwise, that's all I've got for you. All right. Thank you very much. Joel, uh, Community Area Network. Oh, wait a minute. I've skipped uh, Craig, construction and maintenance. Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> um, as Eric stated, uh, we'll be flushing hydrants uh, next time we meet. Um, kind of our big thing going on. Uh, the crews have been vacuuming catch basins on kind of our annual thing that we, in every spring and through throughout the summer, we try to back out one third of the city's catch basins to re remove any sediment and uh, sumps in those. Uh, the other crew has been repairing hydrants and they only have a couple left. So we're good, we're looking good there. Um, we've been finding a few spots where uh, TDS has bored through a few of our things. So we're fixing those and billing those back, those people back out for that kind of stuff. And by the time we come back next month, we are hopefully that our, our construction project has started and uh, we'll be on our way there. So we got a few, few things to do to get ready for that. But other, other than that, we should be good to go. So that's all I have. Very good. Thank you. Joel? Yeah, one thing to report here is that the school district did issue another RFP. It involves the delivery of um, essentially leased fiber, dark fiber to Kennedy School in Junction City. We did respond to that um, and uh, they accepted our response. So nothing done yet in the way of contracting. We'll bring that back to you if and when needed. Um, but you'll recall the last time we did this, we ended up draw, putting together a contract document and bidding that out. And we're just kind of the in-between. So if it gets to that point where we need to bid out work, that stuff will be put together and will be brought to you for, for award. Um, so that's uh, much, much smaller than the last one. It's just one school. Um, <clears throat> there's that. And uh, yeah, that's it for the community area network. <clears throat> Any other director's report? Yeah, uh, we've been doing some interviews. We have an offer out for a vacancy. We still have uh, a couple more, well, at least one more vacancy that we're looking to hire for right now, but we do have an offer out on a, a new employee who will start soon, uh, utility operator. And then I wanted to let you know, because before we meet again um, next month, uh, May 3rd will be the last day of a longtime employee, Danny uh, Ruskowski, 36 years at the wastewater treatment plant. On May, May 3rd will be his last day. So just wanted to thank and congratulate him publicly. All right, very good. A motion to adjourn is in order. I'll move to adjourn, Ray. All those in favor signify by the sign of aye. 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 Hold same sign, motion carried. video of this meeting is available for viewing on the city's website, stevenspoint.com slash videos.